SQL Server Management Studio provides a lot of tools that we can use to interact with the various SQL Server components, such as the database engine and analysis services, integration services, and reporting services. We can access various windows, such as the Registered Servers window to work with items. Registered Servers window allows us to create some uh, connections and store that information for easy access. So here, for example, we have the database engine. We have information stored for our local server. And we can define the server name as well as the authentication method and any other connection properties. And then once we have this information saved, then we can connect directly to that. You can create other registered servers, such as analysis services, reporting services, SQL Server Compact, and integration services objects, and they'll all appear in this registered servers windows for you to um, just be able to right click on that particular item and then use Object Explorer then to explore the objects within that particular registered server. In Object Explorer you have access to a variety of folders that contain objects for that particular server. In this case we have databases and we have separation of our system databases from our um, regular databases. You can access objects related to security and for management and SQL Server agent for example here. Now as I right click on any particular object I get a context sensitive menu that allows me to perform specific tasks that are related to the selected object. So for example if I open up AdventureWorks DW 2008 I can select a table and I could edit that table by modifying the design of the table or select rows or do scripting and um, open up another window where I can paste in a uh, create command or a select command or an insert command for example or look at the properties associated with that table. Now I can also write queries against um, the selected objects. I have the new query button here that will open up a query window specific to the type of object that I've selected, in this case a database engine query. Um, I can also select the database engine query specifically. If uh, I want to work with analysis services cubes, I can select the MDX query button or the DMX query button if I want to work with data mining models, or the XMLA query button if I want to create um, objects in analysis services such as create a partition in a cube or um, process a partition or pro process a dimension. So we'll learn more about these other items later. But for now I can write a transact SQL statement to view records in in this particular table. So I can just type in select top 10 from and I can drag and drop this in here and uh, execute a query or one of the nice things in SQL Server 2008 is that I can actually start typing and it will um, do a helps if I include a from clause I can start typing and the um, tables that are available are there in, using IntelliSense and I can just double click and select um, an item and then when I'm ready to execute the query there's a button here that allows me to do that and I'll get another window down below that shows me the selected columns in that table. And in Management Studio I can have multiple windows open and I would have different tabs accessible up here. I can also have different query windows open for different server types. So I could have several windows open with Transact SQL queries and several windows open with MDX queries and just navigate between those as I need to. And when I'm done with a query, I can just close that window down. I have the option to save the query first before I save it, or I can just discard the query entirely. The Management Studio environment is completely customizable, so on the Tools menu, you can go to the Options, and you can set things like fonts and colors, um, set your keyboard preferences, and set uh, all kinds of properties here related to your query execution and working with Object Explorer and so forth. So you can create an environment that suits you and your work habits. So a common way to work with Management Studio for BI solutions is to explore your tables and see what data is available to explore 
um, the structure of those tables, for example. You can investigate the metadata to see the, the column names and the data types, and also to write queries to investigate the data before you actually start doing extractions, or you can use Management Studio to verify that data landed in the table as you expected. Now let's switch over to Business Intelligence Development Studio. Now this is uh, an environment that's much like working with Visual Studio in that you have solutions that are organized into one or more projects. You may have a solution with only a single project in it, or you can combine all of the projects for a given solution. In this example, we have a project uh, for analysis services, one for integration services, and one for reporting services. If you're doing any sort of custom development, you could also incorporate a C-sharp project or a Visual Basic.net project here as well. When you add a new project to the solution, you select a project template, and then the project is added with folders that are specific to, and designers that are specific to the project type that you've added. So each project type has different properties. You can right-click on a pro project here in the Solution Explorer to view the properties. So for integration services, we have information for the build, for deployment utility, development, as well as for debugging. Whereas for reporting services, we have properties that define where we're going to deploy our reports and our data sources when we're ready to move to a testing server or to a production server and then uh, analysis services properties have um, build information, debugging, and deployment information. So each project type has different sorts of properties that are defined. Now when you work with a given project type, as you right-click any given folder, there are context-sensitive menus that display the kinds of tasks that you're able to perform within that project type for the given uh, folder that you selected. So in the case of integration services, for the packages folder, I have the option to create a new package or to use the import-export wizard or to migrate a package from DTS or upgrade packages if I'm moving from a 2005 environment to 2008, or to go find a package that's somewhere else on the server and bring it into this particular project. When you have a project that's already uh, added to the package, you can right-click on the individual file, and there are options such as executing the package. You can open the package um, using the, the code, the XML, that creates that particular package or the designer mode. You can remove it from the package, um, or excuse me, from the project, and leave the package intact, or you can physically delete it and remove it entirely from your hard drive or uh, rename it, for example. Visual Studio has properties for everything, so as I select a given object, in this case a package, I can see the package properties, which in this case is just the file name, which I can edit here, as well as the full path. And as I hover over a particular property name, I can see the tooltip displays the full name for me, which would otherwise be hidden because of the uh, screen size. If I open this package, I can view properties for any particular selected object. So if I click anywhere uh, inside of this package, just on a, the back background area, I can view the package properties here, such as error counts or who created this and uh, various other settings that I can change. I can also select a task in the designer and view the properties that are associated with that. Sometimes there are dialog boxes that I can also access within the um, designer. So sometimes there are properties that are accessible only within the dialog box that are not accessible through the properties pane. So you learn that as you begin to work with these tools. Now in the case of integration services, we do have a toolbox window that this slides in and out using the auto hide feature which you can disable or enable so if I just 
click that button and now the auto hide feature has been disabled and the toolbox is visible to me and I can drag and drop items from the toolbox into the designer to build up the tasks that I need to perform in this package. Now depending on which tool you're using, um, the designer for integration services or analysis services or reporting services determines the contents of the toolbox window. Analysis services doesn't use the toolbox at all, but reporting services does, and of course here we can see that integration services does. So the contents of the toolbox window will change according to the project type that you're using. And you'll find that as you're working, you will um, minimize and maximize windows as needed to focus on the particular area that you need to do. So you can auto hide the toolbox, you can also do that with the Solution Explorer, and properties here to get the maximum screen real estate established around your designer, for example. If you ever accidentally close a window, you can always go to the View menu and find that particular window again. You can work with many windows side by side, so I can have an integration services package open. And, or multiple packages open, or I can uh, have a reporting services report open, and each of these items will appear in my main window. And just I can toggle between each item by selecting the tabs. And depending on what designer you're working with, uh, that each designer may have different tabs as well. So packages here we have the control flow and the data flow and event handlers and package explorer whereas the um, reporting services designer uh, has the design and the preview tabs. When you're finished working with a particular designer you just click the close button here and that puts that away and uh, if you've made any changes that need to be saved you will be prompted to save that file before it's closed. And then lastly just as we saw in Management Studio you do have the option to um, arrange your environment and set your default settings um, using the tools options menu you can set um, various things like auto recover, find and replace, fonts and colors and so forth and various settings for your environment. So there you have a brief introduction to your tools management studio and visual studio and as we progress through this course you'll see how to use these specifically to create your projects using integration services, analysis services, and reporting services. And at that time we'll dig in deeper into each tool as we need to.